Welcome back, Chargers. I'm Lizette. And I'm Sarah Asmussen. On today's May 3rd installment of DP News, Summer Volunteer Opportunities, Text Talk Act, and more, DP, DP News starts now. Teacher Day DP. Today we celebrate and appreciate our awesome one-of-a-kind teachers. Make sure to thank your teachers for all they do and maybe give them a handshake. Now throwing it over to Scott with another drawing. Hi, this is Scotty G reporting on the after prom sales. Have you bought your after prom party tickets, seniors? If you haven't, they are on sale every day at lunch for $15. If you buy them this week, then you get six chances to have your name in this box. This box will have pre-prizes as well as the chance to win the grand prize. So you want to buy your tickets early. No lines. It's easy. Also, if you bought a ticket last week and you didn't get your free gift, go by the after prom table today so you can get your free gift. And we are still looking for Texas Hold'em players. So if you're interested in playing Texas Hold'em, sign up for the tournament. It gets you a guaranteed early bird pass into the after prom and you don't have to wait in line. But it's the first 36 signups will play Texas Hold'em. And now our winners for today are uh, Jay Day, Roman Kim, Carmen Virial, Tyler Ta, Lizette Mosqueda, Jake Yamasaki. Rebby Neely and Juan Ruiz, claim your prizes in P2 today at lunch. Buy your after prom tickets today at lunch. Get six chances to win. Seniors, go to after prom. Congrats, Lizette. <laughs> DP is the only school that had more than two regional winners at the National Center for Women in Technology. Here's Ashley with National Award winner Megan Hanley. Hey guys, I'm here with Nick Wood Award, Megan Hanley. So Megan, can you tell us more about this award that you won? Awesome. So this award was um, given to high school girls who um, sh share a passion uh, for computing. And so we, there, when you apply through the application online, you get put into two different pools, the regional award pool and the national award pool. And so um, for regional award, they award 10 to 20 regional awards per um, you know, region, and so our school, uh, we had four winners, uh, Callie Zhang, Sienna Applebaum, Jenny Rezik, and, and Zoe Plaxco, which was really awesome, it's great showing, and then the national award, there's 350 runner-ups and 35 winners, and I'm one of the winners, which was really exciting, I got to go to North Carolina last month, and just to be honored for my computing related achievements. That's so cool, congratulations, um, so what are you planning on doing with this award? So this year I created a chapter of a national nonprofit called Girls Who Code and so it's an after school program where I teach 6th uh, to 8th grade girls how to code in the language Python um, for two hours each week and I've done that this whole semester which was really exciting. Nice. If you guys want to be like this lovely lady, fill out the application and you could be a winner too. Back to Lizette and Sarah, behind me. Thanks, Ashley. You are invited to apply to be a volunteer camp counselor at Camp Wees, a day camp for elementary school children with chronic asthma. Camp counselors are high school students who help the staff and guide the children through a variety of activities. If you are selected to be a counselor, you will learn about asthma and health, gain experience working with children, and earn up to 30 community service hours, and of course, have a lot of fun. Orientation is on Monday, July 25th from 2.30 to 4 p.m. and the camp runs Monday through Friday, August 8th through 12th from 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Space is limited, so be sure to apply and for more information, go to the Career Center. Volunteers are also needed for the Student Awards Breakfast on Thursday, May 5th from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the Bacara. If possible, it would be greatly appreciated to have four to six students come and help greet guests, usher them to their seats, and collect name badges after the awards ceremony. 
If some students need to come and leave early in order to get to their classes on time, Bacara employees are happy to accommodate them. All volunteers will also receive a free breakfast from, their, from the Bacara during their scheduled break to show appreciation for all of their help. They will also be able to count the volunteer hours towards their community service requirements. For more information, head on over to the Career Center. The Text Talk Act Network uses text messaging to facilitate a face-to-face -face conversation on mental health. Over 41,000 people aged 14 to 24 have used this as a coping mechanism and 90% of respondents increased the understanding of mental health and 65% of respondents increased their level of comfort in talking about mental health. Come by the office or library anytime this week and donate your unwanted socks. This is a sock drive put on by a couple of seniors looking to donate your unwanted socks to those in need. So if you have any unused and unwanted socks, be sure to bring them to the library or office. Freshmen, if you are interested for in running for next year's sophomore class historian or treasurer, the positions are still open and you are invited to come into P2 today during lunch. On the note of elections, today during third period there will be a runoff for senior class historian between a Stephanie Lopez Inda and Anya Schmitz. Before we go, Chargers, remember that tomorrow is Bike to School Day. Everyone who bikes, walks, scooters, skateboards, or takes the bus will be eligible to get a raffle ticket by the bus loop in front of the school. Then at lunch in the Greek, a drawing will be held and 15 names will be drawn. Prizes include gift cards to places like Blenders, Jersey Mike's, Starbucks, and much more. That's all for your campus news today, DP. Now over to Jeffrey and Dallas with the sports. Hello, I'm Dallas. And I'm Jeffrey Chow, here with your sports report. Baseball had a huge win yesterday, winning 6-5 over San Marcos. Down 5-0 in the fourth inning, our boys caught fire with Peter Apple doubling into left field corner, went to third on Josh Feldhoff's single, and scored on a wild pitch. DJ Sharp drew a walk, and Jed Donnellan followed with a single. That loaded the bases for pinch hitter Evan Kling in his first ever varsity at-bat. Kling delivered a, a ball, hitting it deep to right field for a double, scoring both Feldhoff and Sharp. Timely pitching from freshman Nico Martinez and Austin Bull kept the, Royals, kept the Royals down, and then our boys took the lead in the sixth inning, and they never looked back. Baseball is now 6-3 in the league and 16-7 and seven overall. Yesterday, a few of our divers traveled to SB to participate in Channel League. Our diver, Wyatt Taylor, took third place with over 300 points and a failed dive. Great job, divers. You did swimmingly. Yesterday, boys tennis participated in the Channel League Individual Tournament at SB, with all three of our tennis players, Vincent Villano, Mason Docterman, and Chris Lane, reaching the second round of the tournament. Chris Lane played a two-hour and 19-minute match when he finally pulled out the win, with set scores being 7-6, 1-6, and 6-0. Great job, boys. Good luck on the next round. Congratulations to junior Hunter Clark for being honored as the Athlete of the Week by the SB Athletic Roundtable for his outstanding performance in track and field. Great job, man. Keep it up. Today, our girls' swim team travels to Ventura High to participate in the Channel League prelims. Also, softball has a match at home against Cambrio today, beginning at 3. That's all. Wait! Our girls lacrosse team host their first ever CIF playoff match today in our stadium against Lorena, beginning at 7. At 7? At 7. We need everyone, and I mean everyone, to show up to the stands and show them support. Our girls have had such a historic season, which includes going 10 and three in season and being seated second. Second? Yeah, second in Division Two. Two? Yeah, two in Southern Section CIF in their first official year as a DP sport. Again, when? tonight. When? Tonight at seven. Where? Be in our stadium. Okay, I'll be there. Yeah, be there or be square. Now over to current events. Good morning, Chargers. According to the Los Angeles Times, cases that require someone to unlock a phone with Touch ID poses the question to courts as to how far the government can go to get biometric markers such as fingerprints and hair. The U.S. Supreme Court has held that police can search phones with a valid warrant and press a person in custody via physical evidence such as fingerprints without a judge's permission. Courts have classified fingerprints as real or physical evidence obtained from the body, which is believed to be unlike communication or knowledge since it can't be compelled without violating the Fifth Amendment. Still, some people argue that this violates the Fifth Amendment's prohibiting of self-incrimination because it forces people to provide a potentially incriminating personal data. 
Mark Bartholomew, a law professor at the University of Buffalo who studies encryption and cyber law, said via ABC News, the law is very uncertain on this because it hasn't cut up to technology. That's all for today, DP. I'm Ann Bailey, sending it over to Olivia with the weather. Top of the morning to you, Chargers. I'm Olivia Deveni, preparing you for the harsh weather of Goleta. Today we'll be having a few sun breaks in those cloudy skies with a high of 72 and a low of 55. The trend will continue tomorrow with a slow clearing and a high of 70 and a low of 55. Whatever happened to the cow that was lifted into the air by a tornado? It was an utter disaster. Ooh, I'm very sorry about that one. It was a real mistake. Moving on. I hope you have a dandy day, DP. Olivia Deveni, signing out.